Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, this is question number seven now from the June 2021 exam for the Pure Mathematics P2 from the International um, A level of Edexcel. This question here is about logarithms, um, the part A is anyway, and we have to use the laws of logarithms basically to show that this, to, this expression, this equation, which is in terms of logs becomes this equation, which doesn't have any logs in it. So we have to know about the laws of logarithms and apply them to this um, situation here. Now, first thing, um, when you want to try to um, change a logarithm equation into a non-logarithm equation, what I would like, what I normally do is bring all the log terms on one side of the equation and the non-log terms leave them on the other side of the equation. So here I would take away log to the base 3 of 14x minus 25 from both sides of the equation and that would get rid of it from here and it would end up being on this side. So you have 3 times the log to the base of 3 of 2x minus 1 minus log to the base 3 of 14x minus 25 equals 2. All right, now I want to combine these log terms together into one log term. And then I can, then and only then I can you know, get rid of the log, the logs. There's also another way of doing it as well, but I like to do it in this way where I combine them together first in one log term, and then I can get rid of the, the logs. So basically, um, in fact, both ways, would, both, there's also another way of dealing with this. Both ways would, would involve bringing these two terms together. Now, I cannot bring these two, two terms together when there's a number that's multiplying on the log. I have to use a power law. So this becomes log to the base 3 of 2x minus 1 cubed minus log to the base 3 of 14x minus 25 equals 2. So I've used the power law. Now, some people are saying, how can you just, you know, that 3 just go up there? I mean, how does that make sense? And a lot of students just, okay, uh, just accept it. You know, that's one of the laws of logarithms. Let's just accept it. It's quite an easy proof for this one. So I'm just going to show you just this for just for the, the, the power law, what the logic behind it is, just so that you have an understanding. So it's always good to understand why you're doing things. So, for example, let me take an example of, say, log to the base x, y. And I do plus log to the base x of y plus log to the base x of y. All right, now I can write this in one way as I can say this is three lots of log to the base x of y. So this would be three times log to the base x y. That's one way I can write it. And the other way I can write it is by using the, the law for addition of logarithms where you multiply, okay, what you know, for example, log to the base, as we know, log to the base a, b, plus log to the base a, c. As long as they're to the same base, you can use the multiplication law, where then I can write this as log to the base a, b, times c. Okay, that's one of the laws of logarithms. Um, so what we can do here is we can write this as uh, log to the base x, and then we got y times y times y, which is y cubed. So you can see these are the same thing. There's three lots of log to the base x, y, three log x to the base y. And we can say, let's multiply these together, okay, because when you're adding different uh, the logarithms to the same base, you multiply what's inside there. So you have log to the base x of y cubed. So, of course, these two must be the same. All right, so that's just for the power law. I didn't go through the proofs for the addition and, and uh, subtraction law. I have them other other places. It's just a quick side point just to show you that. Now, so once we've done that, I can combine these two together by using the division law. So when you have log to the base of something minus log to the same base of something, you can use division to combine them into one. So this is log to the base 3 of, and I'm going to have 2x minus 1 cubed over 14x minus 25, and that's equal to 2. All right, so that is um, where we got so far. Now I'm ready to get rid of the log term by using the fact um, that we should know that if you have um, a to the power of b equals c, you can rewrite that as log to the base a of c equals b. So this is vice versa. You have something like this. This is the 
base, this is the power, this is the result. A to the power of B equals C. A to the power of B equals C. So we apply that to this. This is 3 to the power of 2 equals all of this. Okay, that, that, that way you can get rid of the logarithm, which is what we want to do because we end up with something like this with no logarithms in it. So what we can say is that all of this inside here, which is 2x minus 1 cubed over 14x minus 25 is equal to 3 to the power of 2, which will be 9. Okay, so now we can uh, simplify this. So you have 2x minus 1 cubed equals 9 times 14x minus 25 we can expand this. This is like 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1 squared. And that's equal to 9 times 14, which is 90 plus 36, which is 126x minus 9 times 25. Well, that's 10 times 25, which would be 250. 9 times 25 is 25 less than 250, which is going to be 225. 20, yeah, that's right. So now we can expand this. So I'm going to expand the squared bracket first, of course. So 2x minus 1. I could have done this using binomial expansion, by the way, but it's only to the power of 3, so it's not a big deal. Now, to square a bracket, you have to square the first term. So that's remember, the 2 also has to be squared. Then you have to do, do 2 times the first term times the second term. So that's negative 4x. And then you square the last term. Don't forget to square the negative sign as well. And we're getting somewhere now we can just simplify so we're going to have two x. okay so now we're going to um, expand this bracket so we have 8x cubed minus 8x squared plus 2x minus 4x squared plus 4x and minus 1 is equal to 126x minus 225 okay so now we can combine like terms together. There, there's no x cubed terms. So this is going to be 8. There's no other x, x cubed terms. It's 8x cubed. Minus 8x squared minus 4x squared is minus 12x squared. Then we got 2x plus 4x, which is 6x minus 1. And you got minus 126x. And plus 225 equals 0. So let's just combine these last two terms here. So you have 8x cubed minus 12x squared minus 120x plus 224 equals 0. And this can be simplified, and you can see that the answer has got a 2 here. So obviously it must be divisible by 4. So let's see what happens. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so 2x cubed minus 4, minus 12 divided by 4 is negative 3, so that's 3x squared. Minus 120 divided by 4 is minus 30, so minus 30x. And if you divide 224 by 4, you're going to have plus 4 into 22 goes 5 times, remainder 256, that's equal 0. Let's see if we get the same answer. 2 minus 3 minus 30 plus 56. 2 minus 3 minus 30 plus 56. Yep, that's correct. So that's exactly what we were asked to show. And we use the law of logarithms to do so. Okay, now for part B. Um, it says, show that minus 4 is a root of this cubic equation. Okay, now, um, basically, if minus 4 is a root of the equation, it means at x equals minus 4, this curve passes through the x-axis. Okay, so basically, when you substitute, so when x equals minus 4, then this whole thing would be equal to zero okay so let's say f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 30x plus 56 so if x equals minus 4 is a root then we can say f minus 4 will be equal to zero so let's see what f minus 4 is f minus 4 is 2 times minus 4 cubed, minus 3 times minus 4 squared, minus 30 times minus 4, plus 56. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That's 2 times negative 64, minus 3 times positive 16, plus 120, plus 56. 
So 2 times negative 64 is negative 128. And that's 30 plus 80, that's negative 48. And that's plus 120 plus 156 is 176. So that's negative. That's 48 and 28 gives you 76. Yes, yeah, so it's negative 176 plus 176 is equal to 0. So we can say, okay, as f minus 4 is equal to 0, therefore x minus x equals minus 4 is a root. Okay, so that's enough for you to show that. Um, that's part B done. And now for part C. Okay, it says, hence, using algebra and showing each step of your equation, of your working, solve this equation. So we know now that basically one of the solutions to this equation is when x equals minus 4 is a root. We know that that's a root. We found that from the last question. And we have to use that fact to solve the equation. So it says, hence, meaning using what you just found. So x equals negative 4 is a root therefore we can say x plus 4 is a factor using the factor theorem so what we can say is we can let's factorize this to solve it so to factorize this there's two ways we could proceed with we can say x plus 4 and use long division algebraic long division so x plus 4 we've got x cubed x squared x everything's there so we don't have to put a zero of anything so 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 30x plus 56. We don't have to put anything, um, like if there was an x squared term missing from here, we'd have to put plus zero x squared just to keep everything in line when we're doing the long division. So now, x fits into 2x cubed times 2x squared times. You can say x times x times something gives you 2x cubed, x times 2x squared gives you 2x cubed. Then you multiply both these terms by 2x squared and write them underneath their respective places. So under x cubed, I'm going to write 2x cubed. Under the x squared part, I'm going to write plus 8x squared. Okay, 4x, 2x squared times 4 is 8x squared. Then I'm going to subtract these. That's going to give me 0. That's going to be negative 11x squared. Bring down the next term, which is negative 30x. All right, x goes into negative 11x squared, negative 11x times. Multiply by negative 11x, you get negative 11x squared. And mine negative 44x. Okay, I'm going to subtract again. Okay, that gives me a zero there. Okay, let me just uh, make a bit of space here. That gives me a zero, and that gives me negative 30 plus 44 is 14x. Four x goes into 14x plus 14 times. 14 times, and bring the next term down, which is 56. I should have done that before. 14 times x is 14x, and 14 times 4, well, that's 40 plus 16, which is 56 which makes sense. That's a factor. So there's no remainder when you divide it. So we can say that our original expression, which was 2x cubed, so we can say 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 30x plus 56 equals 0 can be rewritten as x plus 4 times 2x squared minus 11x plus 14 equals zero and now we're going to try to factorize this to see if we can find any more factors and then we can solve so let's have a look now i'm going to use my grid method okay so we got 2x squared so that goes in the top corner top left and plus 14 in the bottom right then i've got to find two numbers when you multiply them together i get 28x squared and when i find their sum i get um, negative 11x, negative 11x, so negative 11x, right? So that's going to be I, 4 times 7. Yeah, negative um, 11x, that's going to be 4 and 7, both negative. So negative 7x and negative 4x. When I multiply them, I get positive 28x squared, and when I add them, I get negative 11x. That, those are the right combination. So now I can take out the common factor from these two. That gives me 2x. Then so once I've done that, it's really easy. 2x times something gives me 2x squared. 2x times minus 2 gives me minus 4x. And x times minus 7 gives me minus 7x. So I end up with, um, this becomes x plus 4 times 2x minus 7 times x minus 2 equals 0. 
So my solutions are x equals negative 4 and 2x equals 7 and x equals 2. So x equals 7 over 2. So these are three solutions to this equation. Okay, but we have to find the solutions to this equation. Right, so we have 3 log. We've got 3 log to the base 3 of 2x minus 1 equals 2 plus 2 plus log to the base 3 of 14x minus 25. Okay, so when x equals negative 4, okay, this will be undefined. Okay, we can see very clearly because you're going to have the log to the base of something negative. The log, to, sorry, the log to the base 3 of something negative. Okay, the log function can never have something negative inside it. So this is going to be, okay, undefined. Undefined for x equals negative 4. Okay, if you put x equals uh, 7 over 2, you're going to have, that's going to be 7 minus 1, 6, that's fine. If you put x equals 7 over 2, you're going to have 14 times 3, that, yeah, that's going, to, that's going to be positive. So therefore, x equals 7 over 2 is a solution. And also, x equals 2, that will be positive. x equals 2, that will be positive. Good, whatever's inside here has to always be positive. So therefore, x equals 2 are the two solutions and this is not a solution okay so the solution the, the solutions we found to that equation x equals minus four causes this thing to be undefined we have log the base three of something negative which is not possible okay it's undefined so the only two solutions that that we can accept from these three solutions that we found for this equation are x equals seven over two and x equals two so there's the end of question number seven um yeah that's the end of question seven from this p2 paper thank you for watching other questions from this paper can be found on the playlist that should be appearing somewhere in this area over here. Other questions from this topic of, um, I'll, I'll put logarithms in this playlist over here, and I'll put the factor theorem in this playlist over there. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link that you should find in this area. And in the description of the video, you'll find links to other papers you might want to watch from p1 p3 b4 m1 s1 and some ig papers thank you for watching see you soon